Shabbat Shalom everyone and welcome back to my channel Real Real Serious Productions and as you should know by now I go by the name of Miss EYG and welcome back to the Biblical Truth Unveiled series and as you should see in the description below this is going to be part three um, to the sun the supposed son of the most high deception um, part two um, we talked briefly about what the Holy Ghost really is um, and a little bit about the birth of um, the supposed son and things like that so if you guys have not watched part two make sure to watch part two make sure to watch part one as well um, so in this part three, we will be discussing actually what the Holy Spirit is versus what we know now what the Holy Ghost truly is. Um, if you look it up and actually dig deep, we know what the Holy Ghost is, right? So now we are going to talk about what the Holy Spirit is and what the Most High actually says that the Holy Spirit is. It's two different things, okay? Um, but before we get started, I want to actually, um, make sure that I point out, you know, I'm not trying to just, um, just continue anyone's belief or I'm dismiss, I'm sorry, try to dismiss anyone's belief. Um, you are free to believe whatever you feel is right. Um, I know I specifically what works for me and I'll praise it to the Most High God that he helped me to understand that I'm to call on no one other than him. So you, if you feel different, then that is completely up to you. You have that free will. But for me, I will not call on anyone other than the Most High God. Okay? Him and him only. So I'm not trying to discredit anyone. I'm not trying to discourage anyone. You are free to believe what you feel in your heart is right, and I'm going to do the same, okay? So, um, I don't want anyone to misunderstand my messages to breaking down um, the knowledge and the wisdom that was given to me. All praises and glory belong to the Most High, okay? He helped me to open my eyes and see things differently, and I'm just trying to, you know, help someone do the same, okay? But... That's it. But before we get started, as always, I'm going to show you my sources. King James Bible. Okay, it's all beat up. Don't worry about it. The Complete Apocrypha. Okay. And these scriptures, which um, takes it back to being in the Hebrew language with the Hebrew names. And kind of give you that understanding of um, of you know, what the King James Version is slightly missing. There are other Bibles out there that you can use as well that, um, you know, give you that, the Torah understanding, that hardcore and concrete Torah understanding and the meanings. Um, so, but the only the Most High can, um, you know, give you that spirit of discernment and uncover um the hidden things whatever scriptures that you're using the only the most high um can guide you and lead you with his holy spirit and with his spirit of wisdom okay so without further ado everyone ladies and gentlemen my kings and queens let's take out your bibles and let's dive right into this knowledge so without further ado we're gonna start um in isaiah and we're going to go to Isaiah 63, okay? So the topic at hand is what truly is the Holy Spirit? What is the set-apart spirit, right? Um, we talked about, like I said in part three, we talked about what the Holy Ghost is. Now we're going to talk about what the actual Holy Spirit is. And it's not the same thing. It's two different things. So, um, we talked about what the Holy Ghost is, is spirit is a dead, considered a dead spirit, right? Anything that's a ghost is dead and anything that's a ghost is considered, you can look it up, is considered being a dead spirit, a demon, if you will, 
um, anything that's dead. And the Most High is not the father of the dead, but he's the father of the living, right? So we're going to go to Isaiah 63, and we're going to start at verse 9 through 11. Okay? And it reads, In all their distress, he was distressed, and the messenger of his presence saved them. In his love and in his compassion, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. Right? It's talking about the Most High. What he does with his people. But they rebelled and grieved his set-apart spirit. So he turned against them as an enemy. And he fought against them. So when you rebel against the Most High and you... um. You know, you turn against his set-apart spirit, right? That's when he um, allows your enemies to fight against you, which is what is he doing right now because we are going against his commandments. Verse 11. Then he remembered the days of old. Moses, his people, where is he who brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he who put his set-apart spirit within him them so he's saying that his spirit his set apart spirit is within us right it's inside of us but um just as i brought out um in part three if you guys haven't watched it make sure to watch it in john's 20 um verses 21 and 22 that jc or the, the supposed son of the most high is saying that he's breathing the spirit upon someone he's breathing a spirit on or the holy ghost he's breathing the holy ghost upon someone but here the most high is saying that his spirit is not upon you it's within you so you can't breathe the spirit in someone only the most high can do that right which is we're gonna get into it so um this is the scripture basically saying that his spirit is within us, right? What kind of spirit is it though, right? We're going to get into it. We're going to get it much deeper. Stay with me. Now we're going to go to the book of um, the Wisdom of Solomon, okay? Wisdom of Solomon is one of the taken out books from the Bible and you can find that in the Complete Apocrypha. It's one of the Apocrypha books, right? So we're going to go to Wisdom of Solomon, if you have it. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7. And we're going to start at verses. It's quite a few, a lot of verses in here, actually. Um, we're going to start at chapter 7, verse 7 through 16 first. Okay? And it reads, For this cause I prayed, and understanding was given to me. I asked, and a spirit of wisdom came to me. Stop right there. It said the spirit of wisdom came to me. Right? This is the Holy Spirit. This is the set apart spirit. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom, Solomon saying, that came to him. Okay? Let's keep reading. Verse 8. And I preferred her before uh, scepters and thrones. I considered riches nothing in comparison to her. He's speaking of wisdom. Nothing is compared to wisdom. Verse 9. Neither did I liken to her any priceless gem because all gold in her presence is as little sand and silver would be considered as clay before her. Okay? Nothing is compared to wisdom that he's speaking of. Verse 10. I loved her more than health and beauty and I chose to have her rather than light because her bright shining is never laid to sleep right this is the most high's wisdom that he gave Solomon that Solomon prayed for right and Solomon is saying here that nothing compares to it verse 11 all good things come to me with her and riches are in her hands Verse 12, and I rejoice over them all because wisdom leads them, although I didn't know that she was their mother. Verse 13, as I learned without guile, I impart without grudging and I don't hide her riches. Okay, so he's saying he's not hiding the wisdom that 
um, he's not hiding the great things, the great treasures that wisdom is bringing towards him, right? He's letting it be known, right? He's speaking out. Verse 14, for she is treasure for men that don't fail. And those who use it obtain friendship with Yahuwah, commanded by the gifts which they present through discipline, right? These are all the great things that wisdom does, right? The spirit of wisdom. Verse 15, but may Yahuwah grant that I may speak this judgment to conceive thoughts worthy of what has been given to me, because he is one who guides even wisdom, who corrects the wise, right? He's given praises and glory to the Most High. The Most High is guiding him with wisdom, with understanding, right? Verse 16, for both we are, I'm sorry, for both we and our words are in his hand and all understanding and skill in various crafts, okay? So let's stop right there for a second. Um, actually, yeah, let's go to 17. For he himself gave an unfairing knowledge of things that are to know the structure of the universe and the operations of the elements. So this, let's stop right there for a second. This is wisdom that, that Solomon is talking about, right? He's prayed. Everyone knows that the, that Solomon prayed and and asked and seek after the Most High for wisdom. He said, I, I don't want riches. I don't want gold. I want wisdom, right? And the Most High granted that wish for him and he gave him wisdom. So Solomon is saying here that wisdom is the spirit that the Most High placed upon him or within him, right? That guided him. The spirit of wisdom, not a holy ghost, not a holy um or not holy what do they call it they call it a holy ghost and what he said in in john's the the breath of the holy ghost he that he breathed on someone this the holy spirit is wisdom okay the holy spirit is not man the holy spirit is just the most high speaking to your spirit and allowing his holiness to guide you in wisdom and understanding. The Holy Spirit is understanding and wisdom, right? This is why we have to come from the things that we feel that we know. Because wisdom, even Solomon is saying here, wisdom is great, right? And he that obtaineth wisdom is a friend to the Most High. And along with wisdom comes understanding. So this is the spirit of the Most High, wisdom. Especially now in our captivity where everything is a lie, right? We didn't come into this truth by accident. It was the Most High guiding us to come to this truth with his wisdom, his spirit of wisdom that he is pouring out upon our people, okay? It's not a holy ghost. It is his Holy Spirit, which is wisdom. Okay? But let's keep going. So we're still in chapter 7 of Wisdom of Solomon. We're going to jump down to verse 21. Okay? And it's a lot we're going to read. We're going to read all the way down to 30 so we can get the full understanding of this spirit of wisdom and what it does. Verse 21. All things that are either secret or manifest, I learned from wisdom. I was just saying that, right? All the things that we learn from the Most High, all the things that we learned in this truth is the spirit of wisdom, not JC, not no son. It's the spirit of wisdom, right? That is the artifact of all things that taught me, right? His spirit of wisdom is what taught us what we know now, okay? For there is for there is it in her a spirit that quick to understand, holy, the Holy Spirit, unique, manifold, stable, freely moving, clear, in utterance, and unpolluted, distinct, unharmed, loving what is good, kin, and unhindered. This is what the spirit of wisdom is, okay? Verse 23, loving forward man, steadfast, steadfast, sorry, sure, free from care, all-powerful, 
all surveying through this all the spirits that are quick to understand pure most subtle right verse 24 for wisdom is more mobile than any motion it moves freely right yes she per, uh she pervades and penetrates all things by reason of her purity for she is a breath of power of Yahuwah, right? This wisdom is the power and of the Most High, right? The Most High waking up his people is by his power. It's his wisdom that he is flowing throughout the earth, right? And a clear effortless, I'm sorry, affluence of the glory of the Almighty Yahuwah. Therefore, nothing defiled can find anything entrance into her right if you're defiled if you're not repenting you're not going to find this wisdom right you notice the most high is not pouring his wisdom onto everyone right if you're not trying to keep his law statutes and commandments if you're not trying to turn away from your sins and your old ways you're not going to find this wisdom okay um where was i 26 Verse 26, for she is a reflection of everlasting light, a unspotted mirror of the working of Yahuwah and a image of his goodness. OK, verse 27, she being one has power to do all things remaining in herself. She renews all things. Wisdom renews all things. Not a JC saving the most high spirit of wisdom is what saved you and what renews you. That is the power of the almighty Yahuwah, okay? From generation to generation, passing into holy souls, she becomes friends, she makes friends of Yahuwah and prophets. Wisdom makes you friends of the Most High. Wisdom makes prophets, right? Not JC, not a supposed son, the Most High's power through his wisdom is what makes you whole and holy, right? Let's finish this out. Verse 28, for Yahuwah loves nothing as much as one who dwells with wisdom, okay? Verse 29, for she is fairer than the sun and above all the constellation of the stars. She is better than light for daylight Th verse 30 for daylight yields the two night but evil does not prevail against wisdom okay the most high is saying it well king solomon is saying it it is the most high who saves us with his wisdom it is the most high who saves us with his truth he didn't send a son he sent his wisdom his spirit of wisdom to save you to guide you to lead you in the powers of him, to lead you into righteousness, to lead you to understanding, to lead you to know who he is and who he truly is and what he does and what he's always been. It's his spirit and truth. It's his power. So we, when I say that we have to turn away from idolatry, Believing in a man, believing that he sent a son, even knowing that he's jealous and he said, don't give my glory to anyone. Right. It's idolatry to say that, OK, he sent his son and we're believing on this son and we're waiting for his son to come back. That's taking the glory away from the most high. And he's jealous. He's not going to change. He's jealous. OK, so we have to come from thinking come away from this thinking of the most high sent us his son no matter what name he has no matter what color you, you say he is it's idolatry and it's taking away the most high's glory on what he's doing it is the most high and clearly uh, solomon is saying it right here that the most high has guided him with wisdom it's the most high's power who guides you into wisdom and to understanding is his spirit of wisdom who say who pretty who saves you that saves you we didn't stumble upon this truth and this awakening this great awakening by accident it was the most high pouring out his spirit of wisdom out into his people because we are in the last days and 
he wants us to know, hey, you got to wake up. We have to wake up, my people. We got to wake up. This is the same thing that the Most High said that we did then with believing in false gods. Okay? Let's get it in the precept. Okay? We're still going to be in the book of Apocrypha. We're going to go to the book of uh, Birch. Excuse my pronunciation. Sometimes my pronunciation is not the best. Um, I don't know if it's pronounced Birch or Botch. Barch. Okay. Um, so we're going to go to chapter three. And we're going to go skip down to verses nine through twelve. And it reads, Hear, O Israel, the commandment of life. Give ear to understand wisdom. Okay? Verse 10. How is it, O Israel, that you are in your enemy's land? We're in our enemy's land. And you have become old in a strange country. That you are defiled with the dead. Stop right there for a second. He said, you are defiled with the dead. But we just spoke in um, part three about Holy Ghost being a dead spirit. But here the Most High is saying you're in a strange country. You're not in your land and you're defiled with the dead. Holy Ghost defiled with the dead. You get where I'm going here? That you are defiled with the dead. Verse 11, that you are counted with those who go down in the grave. You have forsaken the fountain of wisdom. So the Most High is saying that we have forsaken this wisdom. What is the wisdom? His spirit of wisdom, right? And that wisdom and understanding is knowing that he is one and only. There is no son. He is the one and only. Okay? We have to come from this deception, my people. He is the one and only. There is no son. We are his sons, okay, and daughters. But we're going to get into that deeper in another video, okay? But now we're going to, um, let's get it in another precept. Still the same chapter, but we're going to hop down to verse um, 35, okay? And it reads, this is our Yahuwah, and there will none other be accounted of in comparison of him. So let's read that again. This is our Yahuwah, our father, and there will none other be accounted in comparison of him. But the son or JC or the supposed son of the most high, isn't he being compared to the most high? He's saying that he is the most high in the flesh. That's the comparison if you ask me. That's still in his glory and saying, no, this is this is the son. So this is the same as saying that's the most high. Don't we don't you understand the most high is jealous? If we're not calling on him in his name, he, he's not okay with that. He's jealous. It's idolatry. No one is to be compared to him. No one. Not a one. No one. Okay? No one can compare it to him. No one can do the works that he's done. And no one can have the credit of bringing into us into the truth with wisdom. The spirit of wisdom. Okay? There is no Holy Ghost. There is no Son. Okay? The Holy Spirit is the spirit of wisdom. And understand it. Okay? Okay, well, let's keep it going. So we're going to go to Psalms 45. And I know I should have put this in the my anointed video. But I'm going to bring these few things out. So stay with me. Um, this goes with part one about the anointing. So let's go to uh, Psalms 45. Um, we're going to start at verse one. Okay. Cause I want to read the entire thing. Okay. So, and it reads, my heart is indicting a good manner. 
I speak of things which I have not, have made touching the king. My tongue is the pen of ready writer. Okay. Of course, we know this is um, the Psalms of one of the kings, right? Uh, verse 2. Thou art fairer than the children of man. Grace is poured unto thy lips. Therefore, Yahuwah hath blessed thee forever. Verse 3. Gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with thy glory and majesty. Verse 4. And in the and in the majesty ride prosperously because of the truth and meekness and righteousness and thy right shall teach thee terrible things. So again, this is a sense of um, the spirit of wisdom, right? Verse 5. Thine arrows are sharp in thy heart of the king's enemies whereby the people fall under thee. Verse 6. The throne, O Yahuwah, is forever and ever. And the scripture of the kingdom is the right scripture. Verse 7. This is the verse I was really trying to get to. Thou lovest righteousness and hatest wickedness. Therefore, Yahuwah, thy father, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above fellow. So if you remember, if you watched part one, I spoke briefly about the Most High having his priests um being anointed with a certain oil right meaning he's anointed you he set you apart and things like that so my reasoning for reading this is to um one i left it out of part one so i wanted to bring it out now but anytime the most high has someone that's going to speak his wisdom speak his truth and speak it especially to his people of israel he's going to have that individual anointed right anointed with oil right and not just anointed by anyone no that person is going to be anointed by a priest himself by someone that is holy themselves right just like he's he uh he also um i also brought it out in part one what he did with aaron right he had aaron be anointed with oil and have his sons the levites be anointed with oil and they were going to be priests for him after that right so remember that um but we're gonna go now to psalms uh 105 and we're gonna skip down to verse 14 and 15 okay and this is a precept about his anointed and he suffered no man to do them wrong yeah he reproved kings for their sake saying, touch nine my, not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. So the Most High said, my anointed, no one can do them harm, right? No one can do any evil towards my anointed, the one that I have set apart, the one that my spirit is on because they're protected, right? So in that sense, wasn't the supposed son or JC or whatever you call him, he was crucified, right? But the Most High said, you can't touch his anointed. Clearly, right? So that's another contradiction that we have to really open our eyes and really pay attention to, right? The Most High, he said in many scriptures, you can't touch his anointed. You can't bring evil to his anointed, right? That's the whole point of you being anointed. You're set apart. No one can touch you, right? No one can bring evil to you to harm you. Right. Remember the most high. If you think about the three kings uh, that was thrown into the um, the fire, the furnace. Right. They were placed there to be killed. But guess what? The most high had them covered that they weren't touched. They came out untouched by the fire. Right. Because they were anointed. No harm could be done to them. Right. And let's not forget uh, David when he was thrown into the, the lion's den, right? He was untouched because he was anointed by the Most High. So you can't bring harm to the Most High's anointed, okay? Even if you try, they're going to come out untouched. So if the Most High sent his supposed son, um, we're going to get into it. We're, we're, man, are we going to get into it? I can't wait to get into the meat and, and potatoes because this is still scratching the surface here. We're still just scratching the surface, but please bear with me. 
um, that he didn't send anyone to die for our sins. We're going to get to what he says about that as well. Um, probably in the next part. But you see what I'm getting to? It's contradictions that we kind of have to keep our eyes open for. Okay. So remember what I just said, that the Most High actually had um, his anointed be anointed by someone that's pure, right? So um, let's go to, let's go to Luke chapter 7. And... Um, Let's jump down to 36 through, sorry, I didn't highlight it, 39, okay? And it reads, And one of the Pharisees desired him that he would eat with him. And he went into the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet, okay? This is the supposed son of the Most High, going to eat with uh, the Pharisees, right? Verse 7, 37, And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, hmm, when she came, that J.C. sat at meat at the Pharisees' house, brought in a box of ointment. Okay, so she, a sinner is carrying this ointment. And stood at his feet, 38, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, began to wash his feet with tears and wipe them with the hairs of her head and kissed his feet and anointed them with the ointment. Hmm. Okay. 39. Now when the Pharisees, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would he have known that who the... what the, who and what the manner of the woman is that touched him, for she is a sinner. Uh, verse 40. And J.C., the supposed son of man, uh, son of the Most High, answering and said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say to thee, and the, and the master say on you, there is a certain creditor which have two debaters, and owned five uh, pences of silver and the other 50. And if they had nothing to pay, frankly, forgive both. Tell me therein, which one will he love the most? So he's basically going into this scenario saying, well, who he's going to love the most? The sinner, the giver, or the the person that, that doesn't have much to give? Um, I didn't mean to, to read that. I was supposed to stop. But you guys see where I'm coming from, right? So the Pharisees were on to something. They're, they're trying to make the Pharisees... Quite a few things that are happening here. One, there's this woman, a sinner, right? She's coming to anoint the feet or the, the head or, or, or touching all upon the supposed son that the Most High sent down, right? But the Pharisees are on to something. Even though they're trying to be painted out as... These big bad guys who's just, oh, they're non-believers, they're non-believers, but they're actually onto something. For one, if the most high son that he sent in the flesh, right, supposedly, is so holy, why would anyone that's a sinner be able to touch him? Okay, that's number one. She's a sinner, and that's what the Pharisees is saying. Like, he should know that the woman that's touching him is a sinner. Notice, if you go back to the days of, of Moses, the Most High told Moses, take your shoes off because the place that you're coming, the ground that you're about to walk on is holy, right? And your shoes are not holy, right? So take them off before you step on this holy ground. Or if you guys remember when the Most High came down on the mountain to speak with Moses, he told the Israelites, he told Moses to tell the Israelites, don't touch the mountain. Tell them to not touch the mountain. Don't come near it. Why? Because they all are sinners and his glory is far too perfect and too much for their sin. They're not allowed to touch anything that his glory is setting upon. Right? 
So why would a sinner be able to touch the son of the most high in the flesh? Does that sound correct to you? Why is she able to touch him? She's a sinner. In another chapter, she's she's mentioned as an adulterer. She's, she hasn't repented. She hasn't been, her sins haven't been wiping away. But why is this individual able to touch something or someone that's so holy? When back then Moses wasn't able to touch the most high who's holy or even the ground that was holy or the mountain that he set upon, set the cherry upon. No one was able to touch it because it's holy. Right. So we have to think this through. And then she she said to have some type of oil. Right. When also I brought out in part one, too, that it's a specific type of oil. Indescriptive. <laughs> Of the oil that you're supposed to be anointed with. She's a sinner that's trying to anoint someone that's holy, for one. And two, if that was the case, why would the Most High have Aaron be anointed and his Levites be anointed, right? Meaning that his spirit was upon them for them to be able to anoint or do anything in a priestly matter, right? But she is a sinner. She's she's not holy at all. But she's able to touch the holy one. She's able to touch and anoint. She's not even anointed. How is she going to anoint him? <laughs> right? We have to really think about this. She's not anointed herself. She's full of sin. But she's going to anoint the son of uh, the supposed son of the most high. She's able to touch him. But back then, Moses couldn't touch him. The Israelites couldn't touch him. Right. And they knew him. They knew his works. They knew his commandments. He didn't want them to touch anything that that he set his holiness upon. But she's able to. That doesn't sound correct to me. OK, so. I wanted to point that out. <laughs> so where I'm going with this is there is no specific scripture saying that the most high supposed son, JC, whatever you want to call him, whatever color he is to you, there is no scripture indicating that he was anointed to be a priest. Just like the most high had Aaron to be anointed, his sons to be anointed as a priest to him. But we hear that the supposed son, he was baptized with the Holy Ghost, with a dead spirit. He was baptized with the Holy Spirit, but he wasn't anointed. Right? And if you really get to it and understand it, his anointings has nothing or his baptizer had nothing to do with the spirit of wisdom. And it had nothing to do with being anointed. There's not a scripture saying that he was anointed by another priest, by another holy one. The John, the baptizement is a, is a deception because he's, what spirit is he seeing? Holy ghost and Holy Spirit are two different things. We just read that the Holy Spirit is wisdom. JC or the supposed son is not speaking anything about wisdom. All he's saying is believe, 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 believe in me, believe in me taking the credit away from the most high to himself. It is time, my people, we really come to understanding who we are serving. But let's go to the book of Malachi, okay? Um, let's go to the book of Malachi chapter 3. And we're going to skip down to... Um, skip down to verse six. Okay. For I am the almighty Yahuwah. I change not. He does not change. Okay. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. The most high never changes. Why would he have a sinner to be able to touch him then? 
when in the Old Testament, he said, no one touches the holy grounds. No one touches anything that he has set his glory upon. You're not supposed to touch it. Let alone if he came in the flesh, you're not supposed to touch him. Because you touch him, if we even saw him, then we die, right? Because we're filled with sin and our sin cannot, we cannot, um, we can't take his glory, right? Why do you think he said the most that those who see me shall die, right? Because you have sin in you and his glory is too powerful for your sin and you will die. So let alone touch him. You can't be, you won't be able to touch him either. If you can't look at him, you definitely won't be able to touch him. Okay, verse seven, even from the days of your fathers, ye are, they are gone away from mine or, ordainance. Okay, we're going away from his ordinance and have not kept them. Return unto me and I will return unto you, saith the almighty Yahuwah of hosts. But ye said, where shall we return? Returning is coming back to him, giving him all glory, giving him all the power, giving him all his glory that only he deserves. So coming back to Yah, coming back to the Most High is coming away from idolatry. The same thing that got our forefathers in trouble, calling on other gods, serving other gods. Okay, we are not to be calling on any other than the Most High and the Most High only. He did not send a son. Okay. He did not have a son. We are his sons and his daughters. And this character in the New Testament is blatantly set up to steal the Most High's glory. To make you think that the only way to get through the Most High is through him. But like I said in my last video, the Most High never needed a middleman. Okay? So this is what he means in this scripture and said, come back to him. We have to come back wholeheartedly to him. We have to serve only him. No middleman involved. Okay? No contradictions, no middleman, no supposed son, just the most high in you. Okay? I'm not even going to consider camps. And not all camps are bad. I don't know, but no one in the middle. The most high doesn't need a middleman, okay? But that is it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you guys um, can follow this. Stay tuned for part four. Part four, we're going to get much more deeper into it. We're going to get down to the, the meat and the potatoes of where I'm really going with this con entire deception of the supposed son of the Most High that he did not sin. Okay? I'm, again, I'm not judging anyone and I'm not trying to make you feel anything. All I'm, all I'm trying to do is do the same thing the Most High has done graciously to me and for me. All praises and glory belong to the Most High and the Most High only. Okay, that he opened my eyes to his wisdom. He opened my eyes to follow in his ways and he allowed his spirit of wisdom to guide me into all understanding. And I'm trying to help anyone out there that that is, you know, maybe you were on the fence or maybe don't have some understanding, seek the most high, seek the father. Okay. Don't even just listen to my words. Do your own research, do your own seeking out, seeking out his wisdom, seeking his understanding. And I promise you, he will reveal all the things that he needs to reveal onto you. You just have to ask him and ask for it specifically. Okay. And he will do it for you. I promise you. And I want to share a quick testimony before I log off that the Most High, I came to this understanding or the Most High allowed his spirit of wisdom to guide me into this direction of understanding um, this entire deception after I prayed and fasted and I prayed and without ceasing and I cried out to him and I asked him the most high if there's anything that I'm missing if there's anything that you feel that I should know in this season in this time please lead me to it open my eyes to it okay and he definitely answered he answered with his wisdom and all praises and glory belong to the most high Yah. thank you I give him the glory that he answered me and hopefully he can do the same to you. But that is it, ladies and gentlemen, for part three. Stay tuned for part four. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I love you all. Happy Sabbath. Be blessed.